Welcome back. We're talking about Quarto and we're very excited about the things you can do with Quarto. You can create reproducible documents in our studio using Quarto that weaves together executable code and narrative elements. And we're talking today specifically about those narrative elements. Right? In the last video, we talked about code chunks and how to control the code and what happens to the code and does it execute, does it show, etc., etc. In this video, we're going to talk about all the text on the screen, how to include hyperlinks and citations and how to make columns, etc., etc. So buckle up, this is going to be good fun. Let's do this. Boom shakalaka. On this YouTube channel, we're creating our programming videos on everything. Just so that you know, this is a series of videos. At the end of it, you're gonna be able to do everything that I can in Quarto. You're gonna have a lot of fun. You can produce pages like the one you're looking at at the moment. It's an HTML output. You can produce PDFs, you can produce Word documents. You can also produce lovely dashboards like this, uh, which are interactive. And of course, you can produce PDFs that have got references in them, et cetera, et cetera. So lots of fun to be had, lots of, lots to be learned, lots to be done. Let's do this, boom shakalaka. So let's go over to our studio and look at how it is that we created the page that you're looking at right now. At the top, of course, we've got our YAML. In the next video, we're gonna do a deep dive on YAML. You can do a lot with that. But underneath that, we've got our first narrative element, and this is just text over here. And it's important to note that in a lot of ways, at this point, you're working with this just with a word processor, right? You've got all of the menus at the top here. They pull down menus. You can change the heading style. You've got formatting styles, et cetera, et cetera. You've got lots of insert options. And uh, it's, it really is uh, very, very intuitive. Let's we'll start off by talking about how to create a link. If I wanted to highlight that text over there, I might want to link that to a URL and it would become a hyperlink as it would in any other document. You might also want to link it to some other part of the document itself, right? So you could have a hyperlink to another heading in your document. You can of course insert pictures. There's a nice little icon there. You hit browse, you find the image on your hard drive and it'll stick it into your document. You can also insert things like uh, citations and footnotes and cross references. I'm going to talk a little bit about citations because I think that is what a lot of people want to know about. So here's an example of a couple of citations that I popped in and you can click on the citation. It takes you down to a bibliography that of course Quarto will produce for you. How do we create these citations? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, let me show you. The easiest way to create a citation is we go to insert, we go to citation. Here we can do a search in any of these data sets or databases. We hit the little plus, then say insert, and it pops the citation into our text. Now, a few things happen when R creates the citation. First of all, it creates a reference bib uh, file, and you can see it's here in our files, reference bib, and I've opened that up, and here it is over here. And this keeps all the information automatically of the references that you've got in your document. The next thing that it does is up in your YAML, it'll include this line here, bibliography, and it will automatically then create a bibliography at the end of your document. It's important to know these things because you might want to do this manually, right? You might want to put this YAML in yourself and create a reference bib document yourself. Basically, you create it by creating a text document and save it as reference.bib. And the reason that's useful to know is because you might not want to use the automatic search function that it's got built into RStudio. You might want to bring citations across from EndNote or something or create the citations yourself, in which case you can do this manually. And of course, you can also determine the style that the bibliography is gonna be in. And I'm gonna talk more about that in the video where I walk you through the PDF that I've created. Next, you might want to include calculated values in the text itself. So in instead of creating a chunk of code, which kind of renders separately from your narrative element, you might want the output of your code to be actually part of your narrative. Here's an example. The average height of Star Wars characters is 1.75 meters. Now, I didn't, in the actual code, if we look in our studio here, this is the code that got used to create that. I've got here, uh, the average height of Star Wars characters is, and then I don't have 1.75, I've actually got some code here that produces that output from the data. The reason this is important is because you might have data that's getting updated, and this way your reproducible document is always updated. When you push render, it will refer to the latest data that you have and update that particular value. And so that you know how to include that code, you use little backticks. Okay, so I've got it here in this document here. You put two backticks around this text over here, the stuff that's underlined in yellow, and it will know that that needs to be executable code that gets inserted into your text. Next, I wanna talk about a thing called a div. You can actually divide up your narrative text and have very specific formatting for a very specific part of your text. And I've illustrated that here by saying, look here, most of my text is all in one column, but here I've wanted it to be in two columns, right? So I've put in 
what's called a div. Now, when you create a div, you've got a lot of control with respect to the attributes of the text that you're gonna put in there. I'm not gonna get into all of that in this video. It would take too long. I'm gonna get into a bit more of that in future videos, because you can see here that I've actually specified the width of the columns and the style, et cetera, et cetera. What I want you to know is that this section over here is not written in the regular visual aspect of RStudio, but instead we've gone over to what we call the source. And here in the source, you get to control a lot of these sorts of narrative element formatting. So in this case, for example, I've got three dots and I've got column margin, and that's just an instruction to stick this particular set of code into the margin. Now you can see here in the source, we've got, for example, call out note. And if we go into the visual component at the same part of the document, we can see that it's created this little box here and you can here edit some of the attributes. You can change that from a note to a tip or important, et cetera, et cetera. And what that lands up looking like is this. Now, all of the details of what I've taught you in this lesson are available on this HTML document. It's all available at learnmore365.com. You create a free account and you can access all of this. If you click on the link on the screen right now, it'll take you there. I hope this was useful. Don't have a change, don't do drugs, always do your best. Speak to you soon. Take care. Bye.